In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can perform a flood frequency analysis using the USGS program called PEAK-FQ. The PEAK-FQ software can be downloaded directly from the USGS. You can see the web address here. Uh, the thing that you need to know about it, though, is that it is not compatible with Windows 7, Windows 8. Uh, in order to get it to run, you have to run the program in uh, compatibility mode or uh, virtual Windows XP on your computer. So if you want to know how to install and use Windows XP mode in Windows 7, I'll refer you to this link. Uh, you can get it all configured on your computer so that you can uh, run the virtual XP and that's what you need to have uh, the uh, PKFQ to work. So here I'll demonstrate the process of identifying the stream gauge data that is going to be used for the analysis. Um, if you want to just zoom in on your area, by the way, this is the National Water Information System Mapper. So you can go to that website and zoom in on a stream gauge area that you're interested in. And if you just uh, click on any one of these symbols, then it'll pop up the information for the area. And uh, you'll be able to look at the dates that are available and so forth, uh, what type of data is there. Uh, for me, I already know the site number that I'm interested in downloading the data at, so I'll type that in. All right, it brings up the site, and uh, what I'm going to download is going to be the uh, peak rather than the daily discharge. It may take a second for it to pop it up. I'm not seeing it there. There it is. So I'll click on access the data. In my case, I want to download the peak stream flow in order to do the peak FQ analysis. And you can see the link shows that I've already downloaded it before, but I'll go through the process here again. Uh, the default is for it to show you a graph of the data, but what we need is basically just a text file. That's what peak FQ uses to read it in. So you can see that that's already an option available for the download. So click on that right click to save as and it's a text file. Uh, this is for the Hogue Creek so I'll just write over what I've already got Hogue Creek, Hogue Creek Peak text file. So I've got that saved now. What I'm going to need to do is copy that text file over to my virtual computer so that I'm able to um, uh, to get it to work. So let me start up my virtual computer virtual Okay, and uh, I'll double click on it. Once you create a virtual computer, it'll hibernate it and it starts up pretty quickly. Um, when it comes up, you'll get that um, familiar look of a standard Windows XP operating environment. And so what I'm going to do is go to the place that I've saved the Hogue Creek peak data and you can see I'm just going to click and drag it over into, oh, maybe that doesn't work, so I'm going to right click, copy, and then right click, paste, and there it is, Hogue Creek. All right, you can see I've already previously installed Peak FQ in this virtual PC environment, so I'll double click it, and um, Okay. Open the file. It's on my desktop and it is Hogue Creek Peak. And when Peak FQ opens up one of those files, it gets the station ID and I'm going to double check to make sure it's the correct station. It looks like it is. And these are dates that I already know. The beginning data for this data sets from 1961 to 2012. So the data looks good. It's got all the peaks that I need. Uh, it gives you some statistical information about, I don't know, how it fits the underlying model of the uh, peak FQ system. Uh, all you really need to do is click on Run Peak FQ, view the output, and then you can save this as a text file. And so Hogue Creek Peak output. So now I've got that and I can move it back over into my normal environment. Um, actually, I don't remember where it saved it. All right, C temp. OK, 
Okay, so I will just go to that C temp location here in my virtual computer. All right, right click, copy, go back here to my normal computer, paste, and you can see here is the report for that peak analysis. And what we really want to get at is here. This is the annual frequency curve. The expected probability estimate and the 95% confidence interval. So for example, 0.1 annual exceedance probability corresponds to a 10-year storm. And so for this watershed, it looks like a 10-year storm. The expected flow rate would be uh, 2,247 CFS. And the 95% confidence interval is between 1773 and 2880. So uh, that's a brief summary on how to use the uh, PeakFQ pro, uh, program in order to perform a flood frequency analysis.